This video is part of a series. Complete the previous videos in this playlist before you start this video. The complete playlist information, the material and the code file information is given in the video description below. So today we are going to discuss something called data structures or data types in Python. So what exactly are data structures? These are some kind of foundational concepts where you are storing your data. They will define how the data is accessed. They will define how the data is manipulated. If you have some kind of data, you cannot store this data in a single object format in Python. Sometimes you store the data in a different type. Sometimes you store the data in a list. Sometimes you store the data in a string. Sometimes you store the data in a dictionary. Sometimes you store the data in a set or a tuple. Like that, there are different data types in Python. And within data types, there are multiple number of data types. We need to understand what is in touch with us that we have to understand in depth what may come every now and then very rarely based on the need. We can learn it later on. So data structures, they organize the data and they impact the memory, how the data is stored internally that is defined by data structure. So that will definitely impact the overall speed of the code efficiency of the code. Understanding data structures is the critical aspect. A lot of times people learn Python on their own or people learn Python from, let's say, Udemy or let's say YouTube. But the problem is we have to follow a structured manner. Even without following the structured manner also, we can learn Python, but it will be very confusing in the beginning. So I'm starting with some of the foundational concepts. Those are known as data structures. If you are comfortable with data structures, automatically you will be comfortable with the rest of the upcoming topics that we are talking about. But the only thing is people ignore these data structures thinking that they are too simple. Even though they are simple, once you get a very good understanding, then only you should move forward. Let us go ahead. Once I tell you what are these data structures, then you will get clarity. By the end of this session, I'll make sure that I'm going to give you 100% clarity on what are these data structures. So within Python, there are multiple data structures. Some of them are primitive. Some of them are non-primitive. Some of them are user defined. Some of them are built in. What do you mean by primitive? Primitive means very basic data structures. These are the basic data structures. That means if you are storing a number, it will be stored as an integer or a float. That is very pretty much basic, isn't it? No matter what programming language that you're taking, these are primitive. They must be there. Okay. Remaining are optional. Let's say whether you have these or not, that is optional. Even without these, you can handle, but these are like you have to, when you're writing a program, either you're working with numbers or floats or float means a decimal number or strings or Boolean. Boolean means true, false values. You may want to check sometimes whether it is right or wrong or true or false in those cases. So there are primitive data structures, integer, float, string, Boolean. There are non-primitive within that. There are built-in user defined. Built-in means Python will give you automatically these without defining them. These are user defined. We have to define them. So what I will say is this almost 100% of the times you will use them as a data scientist or as any programmer, you will be using them. Maybe this every now and then they will come and go in between. You might be using, you must know these as well. So this, there is no option. These are like 100%. You have to understand how to handle integers, how to handle strings, how to handle booleans. There is no option, other option for you. Now, this is like every now and then maybe you have, will be working with lists. Every now and then you'll be working with dictionaries or sometimes with tuples, sometimes with sets. You may be working. So you will be using them in several programs, maybe intermediate to advanced programs. You will definitely use them. Now, these are kind of rare. Even if you ignore them right now, that is fine. Even without them, we can handle it. These are kind of very advanced type of uh, data structures. Even if we don't learn them right now and keep it for at a later stage, that is still fine. Can I work without a stack? That is fine. Can I handle without a queue? That is fine. Can I handle without a linked list? Can I handle without a tree data structure? That is all fine because these are from the programming point of view or Python developer point of view, they may be important, but from a Python data scientist point of view, these are the ones that we use very frequently. So we have to be hundred percent sure on these topics. This is like, we have to be almost feeling like home. This is something like if you're talking about integers and handling integers, if you're talking about handling strings, slicing strings, handling or accessing a particular element in the string or handling list, I am absolutely comfortable. That's what we have to say. And it's my responsibility to make sure that I'm making you absolutely comfortable in this. So these are the four data types. You don't need to memorize them. Automatically, they will come and sit in the memory once we do enough practice. And these are some of the data types that are built in non-primitive that we will be discussing now without any delay let us get details of this i think integers 
float, string, boolean. These are not that difficult to understand. Automatically, we will be feeling like we are almost working with an extension of SQL or Excel only. So let us get into the code file. Then I'll show you how this works and what is this data type, etc. As usual, in the classroom, I am doing the exercises in Colab. You will also be doing the exercises in Colab. But later on, while you are practicing, later on when you're doing the assignments, try to spend some time on Jupyter Notebook. Okay. I want you to feel comfortable with Jupyter Notebook. Do you understand my intention, all of you? Why I'm forcing you to work on Jupyter Notebook? Yes, sir. Yeah. Please yeah. understand that if we, I want to simulate a real working kind of environment. That's why I'm forcing you to work on Jupyter Notebook while working with Colab is extremely easy. So now I am keeping the code file in the chat window code file link. Open that code file link. Once you have opened that code file link, if it is working, give me a confirmation in the chat window. So now I am keeping the code file in the chat window code file link, right? Sir. Yes. So instead of practicing in Google Colab, you can't you start practicing in uh, Jupyter itself. Yes, you can, you can do that. Yes. But the only thing is, uh, Jupyter Notebook installation very much depends on the system. So what I have observed in the classroom is people have different, different systems, isn't it? Because of that system related errors are popping up or Python version related errors are popping up. Since I want everyone to use the same version of Python, same system, same configuration, I'm bringing some kind of uniformity by working on the Colab. Okay. Uh, just to avoid, so like usually what happens is in somebody's system, it is working in somebody's system, it is not working. The reason is not due to syntax. The reason is due to the Jupyter version or something. Okay. That is why in the classroom, like if you can handle the error on your own, go ahead with Jupyter. Otherwise in the classroom, we'll practice on Colab. And then later on, like when you are uh, kind of practicing later on, you can practice on Jupyter Notebook. Okay. So whenever you want to add a code cell, the usually I, what I do is anyway, this code cell, you can experiment. Uh, here itself later on i'm going to give you once again i python notebook file anyway once again to you so how do you add code cells by adding these uh, plus sign so here i'm adding so many code cells so these are all the code cells that i'm adding if you just click on this code it will be adding the code cells now i'm talking about integers let's say if i say age is equal to 30 now that internally in python so it is first time it is saying that it is authorized by someone else you say run anyway and then it will create a cloud instance. This is the cloud instance that is getting created. Initially, the first command will take a little bit of time because uh, some RAM and some disk space is given to you. That is why it is taking time. Now, if I want to know what is the type of this object, you will say print and I want to know the type. Can you make a guess what will be the way to know the type of this object? Just to make a guess about the function. If, if I want to know the data type, what can be the function? I will simply say type and say whatever is the object that I have created. And if I want to use the suggestions given by Google Colab, I can use the tab and then hit enter. What does it say? What type of class is it? Int. Int. Is it straightforward? There's no explanation needed there. You have stored 30 in age. And when you ask for the type, it has given you as integer. Now, when I say income is equal to $12,250.567. Now, if I say in the same cell or in the next cell, type of income, can you make a guess? Float. Hmm? Float. It will be given as float. This is float. Right? So, this is a pretty straightforward. We understand. We understand how these numbers and floats work. There is no point in discussing a lot about it. But let us discuss about something called uh, strings. We need to understand how strings work. That is very important. Before that, simply quickly do the integer versus float one. Now, strings are one of the most popular data types in Python. And you must be very comfortable in strings. And once you understand a particular structure, you will be feeling very comfortable. Okay. Let us suppose if I say name is equal to Sheldon and I'm trying to print the name. Now, what happens here is the Sheldon is there, right? When you're storing it in a variable called name, automatically it will be indexed. What do you mean by indexing? This one will be associated with some memory. This one will be associated with some memory. Once you index any of the data, Accessing will be very fast. Everything related to that will be very fast. When Python first came in, 
people were very excited about working with strings because it is very efficiently indexing everything and everything works much much quicker with strings when you compare python with any other programming languages like java or maybe if you talk about data analytics programming languages python versus r python versus sas you will feel python is much more efficient in handling the strings it will index what do you mean by indexing it will automatically associate every character in this string with a memory allocation that means if i want to access only s there is a way to get that how do i do it i will write the name of the whatever is the object name itself if you want to access s so indexing starts like this s is 0 in python indexing starts with 0 that means if i want to access the third element what is the index that i have to write if i want to access the third element 2 2 if i want to access the first element usually our tendency is if i want to access the first element our tendency is name of 1 is that going to work it doesn't work i have no. to give name 0 so try name 0 all of you what are you getting as the output s now let me show you one interesting code now if i say name 1 what is expected output if i say name 1 what is the expected output h since it is sheldon the name is it is h now think carefully and tell me if i say name 0 2 3 what is the output since name is a uh, sheldon s h e l so if i give like this so it is what s h e l so what is s 0 and then this is a uh, 1 this is 2 this is 3 all of you do you agree with that if we say name 0 to 3 the output should be s h e l yes or no that is a general logic isn't it that's what the usual approach says let us go ahead and uh, see the output now that is a little different than what we have expected isn't it what did we expect s h e l what what is the output s h e is there anything wrong with python there is nothing wrong here the kind of this is called slicing so if you want to access a slice of this string if you mention in this manner this index is included but the last index is not included that means if you want to print first three characters you can directly put 0 to 3 ideally it is four characters but if you put 0 to 3 0 1 2 is considered third one is ignored so including 0 excluding 3 this we have to pay attention to including 0 excluding 3 are you with me let us suppose if i write 0 to 4 what is the output that is expected s h e l s h e l d s h e l d even after listening to the previous explanation if i put 0 to 4 including 0 excluding 4 excluding 4 what is the index in 4 what is the item in the fourth index D. D. So S H E L D will be printed or not printed? Think about not it. Printed. Not printed. So what will be the output? S H E L. S H E L. Shall we check that? Yes. Yeah, makes sense. Let me do it once again. So if I put two, two, five, S H E L D O N, it looks very simple. It looks very obvious, basic. But we need to understand. If I put two to five. tell me how do you read this including e l d including 2 excluding e l d so including 2 excluding 5 so what is 2 so what will be the output that you expect from name 2 to 5 before executing that itself we will try to uh, guess the output can you tell me the output e l d e is a 2 and then l d o will be printed or not printed printed or not printed oh not printed not printed. printed let us see makes sense yes now let me give you some examples quickly you have to tell me if i put 1 to 5 what will be the output 1 to 5 before i do it i want you to guess the output then we will go ahead with the execution 1 to 5 what is the output h e l d h e l d let me guess let me check that yes you are on track a couple of more examples we'll try then we will go ahead okay so let us suppose if i try 
4 to the end what's the output here till n so T since you are not mentioning anything what is the starting index zero here in this uh, output D, D. where are we starting at d is D. there any ending that you are giving no since if you do not give any ending it means till the end of the string so can you tell me what is the expected output d o n d o n d o n check that out make sense now yes. let me do the other way around this it is little difficult or little complex try to think about it if i give this what did i mention as initial did i mention anything as a starting index to python here it will be s h e did i mention anything as the beginning index no. here no. no i haven't so if i haven't mentioned anything as beginning index what is the expected starting point zero zero so that means it is going to start at like if you don't mention anything it is almost like zero now from zero what is the ending point three three, three. three will be included or excluded excluded always yeah. the last element is excluded now with that idea in mind can you tell me what is the output that you will get in this s h e s h e do you agree with that all of you yeah. it will not be s h e l because 3 is always excluded once you execute it you will get s h e are you comfortable with indexing how it works in python you have to make a side note here what is a side note or somewhere in the notepad or somewhere you write this note the reason why i'm making you write so that you can remember this for long in python when we are accessing using indexes the first index is included the last index is excluded when you are slicing this is called slicing you are kind of taking a slice from the data you're taking a slice from the string when you are using slicing it will include the first index the first item in the sequence that you have mentioned that will be included the last index will be excluded are you comfortable with this all of you is there any confusion in this no yeah makes sense we will do a small exercise also in the classroom itself but before that i want you to be absolutely sure on this there is nothing complex it is just that initial one is included the last one is excluded just to check whether you are like everybody try to participate in this just i am trying to check your understanding nothing okay let us suppose if i write 2 to 10 can you tell me what is the output i wrote 2 to 19 what is the output ELDON. So first, ELDON. let us try to have a dialogue. The initial index is what? E. E, which is like index at 2. Is that included? Included. Now, yes. what is the max index that we can give here? 19. Max to max. 18. Max to max index is how much? Like here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 only are there. Overall, 7 elements are there. We can access 7 elements only. But I have mm. given 19. Is it going to throw an error? No. So it will show whatever is available and then remaining ones, if it is not there, it will not throw an error. So it will start at E. It will be E-L-D-O-N. Yes. Shall I do it? Is that the expectation? Yes. yes. E-L-D-O-N. Are you with me, everyone? Now tell me this last example. Then we will move ahead. 3, 2, 4. I'm trying to confuse you maximum amount of time so that you are kind of strong. 3 to 4, that's what I have given. Think carefully and answer. Don't give me the quick answer L. that you will get. Give me the right answer that you will get. L. So let's L. have a dialogue. When I say 3 to 4, what index is included? Only L. Only L. L. Index number, index item, C. 3 C. is included. A. Yes. And what is excluded? O. 4. 4 is that excluded. Is so that means automatically what is going to be printed? L. L. Let us see. L. Now let me confuse you with one more last one. If I put this. Sir, no output. I just tried this. Mm, you guys are on track. What? Why it is not giving any output? It has given output even for this one. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Because it has understood. Like uh, maybe the guy is uh, like whatever Python is trying its best to give you the output. But this one is confusing. When you say this, including what? What is which index is included? Three. three. three which is index is excluded? Three is excluded. So is it ambiguous or is it is a clear uh, instruction that we gave to Python? It's ambiguous. Isn't it? If I tell you like please bring the T and also don't bring the T. What do you will do? There is nothing, isn't it? We will not take that uh, command. That's what has happened. Are you comfortable with this, all of you? Yes. Let me just uh, 
do this last one. Tell me the output of this. We will go ahead. S H E L. S H E L. Now there is one command called length. It will tell us what is the length of the string. Can you tell me what is the length of the string? How many elements are there in this string? How many elements are there? S H E L D O N. Overall, seven elements are there. How do I get the length of the string? Can you make a guess about the function that will give us the length of the string? Length. Print. Can I use L E N G T H? Yeah. L E N G T H. L E N is sufficient. Okay. Or L E N G. That is the guess that I'm making. But the actual function is L E N length. Is L E N. How do you know whether it is a function? Google Colab is giving you a hint. Can you observe that hint? Google Colab is giving you. Let's say if I say L E N G. I'm just guessing. Versus L E N. Tell me what is the hint for functions? It is giving a kind of uh, different color. Isn't it? For variable names, it is giving a different color. For strings, it is giving a different color. What is the green color one? What is it comment. for? Comment. For comments, comment. it's giving green color. That is why I'm suggesting you to use Google Colab briefly in the beginning. It's kind of makes our life little easy. So if I say length of name, what is the expected output without executing? Can you tell me? What is the expected output? Seven. Seven. Perfect. Sir, I have a doubt. Carry on. Sir, when I typed in that print name, uh, seven is to four. So that is also not showing any output. I mean, like, uh, isn't it taking? Why? Why is that? So first of all, in a sequence, this has to be lower. This has to be higher. It should throw an error, but uh, it is showing you nothing. Okay. Sir, when you took uh, four is to nineteen, so nineteen is also nothing on the right side. See. So it now still let's see. Four is to nineteen. What is the starting index? Four. Four. That means D is there. Okay. O is there. N is there. So it's possible. Five. Is it possible? Possible. Yes. Six. Possible. Beyond that, is it possible? Seven. No. There is nothing. That's why. Okay. Okay. It's all about. We are giving an instruction to Python. Is it able to understand that without any ambiguity? If there is any ambiguity, either it will throw an error or it will return nothing. Does it make sense? Yes, I do understand it's a very primitive, very basic example, but I want you to be just a little comfortable here. It's not like you will be doing some data analysis on this type of data, or you will be working on this type of Sheldon and Shandal Gopan. No, it will. You will not be doing that, but you will be working with indices, and you have to have absolute clarity on how indices work. If somebody asks you, get the first ten elements, what will be your command? Tell me, get the first ten elements using the indices. What will be the starting point? Zero. What will be the ending point? Are you going to write Eleven. nine? Eleven. Sorry. If you, want, if you want to get first ten, this is sufficient. Let's say here in this example, somebody asks, get the first seven elements or get the first six elements. What will be the output? What are the first six elements? Or the get the first three elements? What will be your way of writing first three elements? Three. Zero to two three. Three only. Three elements. You can write three. But ideally, if you are thinking from the indexing point of view, it looks like four elements. But it is zero to three only. Now let us go a little bit more into this. Then I will give you a small exercise here. Let us suppose if I am saying my first name is uh, Sheldon, last name is Cooper. Okay, Sheldon Cooper. Now if I try to concatenate both of them, there are multiple ways of doing it. One of the ways of concatenation, Python has made it extremely simple for concatenation. What is it? If I want to get the full name, if I want to define full name. I will write first name plus last name. First name plus last name. Can you tell me what will be the expected output? What will be the expected output? Sheldon Cooper. Sheldon Cooper. Sheldon Cooper. First name is not defined. Last name is not defined. Whenever you see an error, first of all, be very happy. All of you, I'm trying to give you one trick in learning any new Python programming language or any programming language. As soon as you see an error, you should be double excited. What is the general tendency? As soon as we see an error, we panic. Yes or no? As soon as we see an error, we tend to lose a little bit of motivation. But I do it the opposite way. I get very excited. Tell me why, when we are learning something, as soon as we see an error, why we should get excited? Tell me the reason behind it. Well, teach us more. 
because that will give you an opportunity to learn more than what others are learning. Tell me what mistake I have done. Can you help me here? Look at the error. When you are reading the error in Python, there is a trick that I told you. When you are reading the error, what you should do? Bottom to top. Bottom, bottom to top. Isn't it? Am I going to read name error, trace back, most recent call, IPython input? Is that the way I'm going to read an error? No, sir. No, 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 no. Where is the error? First so name not defined. Noted. First executed name not defined. I have a defined first name, no? Uh, so we haven't yes. executed. Yes, I have defined in my mind, but I haven't executed. I haven't told Python that first name is Sheldon. So once you execute it, now if I execute, is it going to work? It yes, must work. Sir. Sheldon Cooper. But is that the format that we have imagined? Is that the format that we are looking no. for? No. no. I think what is better way of printing it? Sheldon? then space, then Cooper. Yes or no? Yes. Shall we give a space? Can I concatenate? Can you help me in the same thing? Concatenating with space. Can I put some space in between? So this is the space plus no space. Is it a string? Empty space is also a string. So yes. string one yes. is first name. This is string two. This is last name. Do you think it's going to work? It is going to work. Are you with me? Concatenation. Yes. Hmm? All right then. Shall we do a quick exercise then? I want everyone to try this. Usually you can do the exercises after the classroom. But this one we will try to do it uh, right here. Just to see how comfortable are you. Because I want you to be very good with this indexing. Because once you are comfortable with indexing, automatically you will be very comfortable with other topics that are coming up. So create a string hello world. And be aware, aware of the empty strings before and after. So you have to say my string is equal to hello world. Okay. There is a space before this. There's a space after this. What is the index position of R? Remove the first and last space from it and store it in a new variable. Extract only print E L L O using indices. You have to do it. Access W using the index location and put an exclamatory mark using concatenation put an exclamatory mark at the end very simple exercise isn't it looks simple only when we start doing it we may get some doubts i want you to try this right now all of you are you with me yes yes so let us do it together so first we have to get something called hello world so the string name is hello world. So I would say my string is equal to hello world. Is that what they are expecting? No. No space before and there is a space after. The reason why I am giving space before space after is sometimes we tend to ignore this. When you are trying to print my string you will get the output like this. Now hello world. Do you really see the spaces before and after? If I say hello world, hello has a five, world has five and there is a space in between. Total, we will think if I say length of my string, if I say length of my string, what is the expected length? Tell me what is the expected length of my string? 13. 13. It looks like when you print it, it looks like hello has five, world has five. In between, there is a space. We expect it to be 11. But you said 13. There are two more values that you have added. From where you are adding them, what are those? There Before is a the space here. Mm -hmm. There is a space here. Can you see them? When you try to highlight in Colab, the space shows with a dot. If I try to print the length of my string, it is 13. Right. Next, what is the index position of R? That was the question. What is the in this is a direct question for you to understand and give it. What is the index position of R in Hello World? So what that would be? Nine. It is just counting, basic counting only. You have to perform just nine. to see or understand. Nine. Confirm that all of you is that nine. So that means if I print my string nine. Am I going to get that? 11. Sir. Is that 11 or 9? Quickly check with this uh, method. Quickly check the index position. Sir, is it 8? 
No, check that. Just uh, you tell me what is the index position of R. It's nine. So some people are saying eight. What is the index position of R? Oh, let me try to once again do the way that I have done. I will try to do it again just for the sake of clarity because still some people are confused. So this is the string. Right. Yes. Now these are the numbers. Do we have a space before that? Zero. There is a space. Yes or no? For space, I have given zero. Yes. For H, I have given one. For E, two. And then three. And then four. Five. There is a space after this. Six. Seven. W is seven. O is eight. R is 9, 10, 11, 12. This is space. There is a space which for that space, 12. 0 to 12. What is the length? 0 to 12 means length is how much? 30. Matching or not? It's matching, right? Now tell me what is the position of R? That was the question. What is the position of R? 9. 9. Is there any confusion in that? If I want to know what is there in ninth position, I will simply say print my strings, my string and put nine. Why it is saying my string is not defined? Wrong variable. Hmm. What is the variable that I have defined? My underscore string. My underscore. Perfect. R. Make sense or not? As I told you, it looks very yes. primitive. It looks very simple. But we are not able to tell the position of R within one shot. Are you with me? Yes. yes sir. Now I want to remove the first space. I want to remove the initial space and the last space from the string. And I want to store the rest of the ones in the data. Now I want to use indexing for that. I want you to use Indexing, have you understood? My string is hello world. I want you to get a substring. I want you to use slicing to get hello world only without spaces. Are you with me? So my string is the original string. I would say my string one has to be like this. Hello world. Okay. Can you use can you use indexing for doing it? All of you try it. Give me your output in the chat window. What is the command that you have to write? Once you try it out, make sure that you are printing the output, checking everything is working fine or not. If it is working, give me the output in the chat window. The idea is I want you to get hello world from this lengthier string of hello world using the indices. So you know the index positions of everything. So let me show you the output, how it works. I want to create hello world, but without these spaces. So the way I will do it is my string one is equal to, I will write my string, right? My underscore string, right? And then I will try to use the indices. Tell me what is the starting index that I have to give? Zero. One. If I One. give zero, is that right? No, we don't need to take space. One. The whole point is what? What is the whole point that we are discussing here? We don't want the initial space. So do you want me to give zero here at the beginning? What is the beginning index that we want? One. Beginning index is one. Are you with me? Everybody, are you able to understand? Are you not able to understand? We don't want the first space. Which means I will start from one. And what is the ending position? Think this time. Don't just give me the first answer. Think what is the ending position that I have to give? 12. 13. 11. So should I give 13 or should I give 11 or should I give 12? 12. If I give 11, 12. 12. 12. 12. let's see what 12. happens. 11, bol diya. Galti ho gaya bhi. Okay. Now you cannot take back. Okay. You told 11, which means I will lose what? 
D. D. Why? This is wrong, right? Is eleven included? D is at eleven. Is it included? No. See, that is twelve. Now somebody told thirteen. Is thirteen correct? It will have a space here, isn't it? So we have to say twelve. Then it will be printing hello world. Are you with me? So basically, the question here is. The string that is given to you is "Hello World" with initial uh, space, final space. Okay. Yes. The variable that it got stored is my string. Yes. Now the exercise that I gave is you have to create something called my string one. Okay. And what is the requirement? The requirement is I don't. This my string one is kind of cleaned version. What do you mean by cleaned version? I don't want any spaces in the beginning and at the ending. So I want to create my string one. By removing the spaces, that's where. Okay. Okay. That's the kind of exercise that I gave. As I told you, this indexing looks simple. When somebody is explaining, when we are looking at it, it looks simple. But when we start solving it, that is when we get confused. But anyway, once we see the output, then we tend to correct ourselves quickly. Are you ready for the next exercise? I want you to extract E L L O. From the above output using the indexes. Can you do it, all of you? At least this time, give me the output in the chat window. The code that you are going to write. E L L O. You can use my string. From my string, you have to extract E L L O. Have you understood the exercise at least? You have to extract E L L O. This is what I want to see in the final output from my string. What is the code that you are going to write? Shall we write it? I will write my string, or I can store it somewhere. And then, what is the starting position? Two. What is the starting position two. in my string? Two. Where is E? Two. Two. Two is two. Two is two. Five. Five gone. Who is to five? Six. What mistake Six. O has done? Now that is what I want you to think. It is easy, but not very simple. So two included. Is five included? No, the six. Six. Two is two. Isn't six. it? Are you at least confident in this? Maybe you're do doing some small mistakes here and there. But overall, the working behind the scenes, the indexing part, are you confident in this? Later on, can you quickly check, okay, whether the output, let's say, even you have made this mistake, but you will not be blank, isn't it? You made this mistake. I want you to print E L L O, but you have printed E L L only. You know what is the next step, isn't it? That's what I meant to say, confidence. So in coding, it's not that you have to get the output always. It's that once you don't get the output, do you have a way out? Do you have the way to get me the final output within two three iterations? With your own tips and tricks, that is sufficient. Now, my last question to you is: Are you confident in Python indexing? Are you confident yes. in slicing? Yes. yes. Like where it starts. Like the major point that you need to remember. I know I'm repeating it multiple times. Initial index is included. The last index is excluded. Excluded. Are we with that, all of you? The general tendency is, if you want to get the first seven elements. Or if you want to get, let's say, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I want to print until seven. The initial tendency is I want to print until seven. People give seven or whatever is the index of seven. Here the index of seven is actually six. If I give till six, then it will not be printing. So initial index is included. Final index is excluded. Let us suppose this is the output or this is the data that I have. In this, I want to print till seven. That means I have to go one beyond that because it is starting from zero. Indexing is starting from zero. Maybe I'm going to give one more exercise right after this session. Once it ends, there will be one assignment. In that, you will get multiple chances to work on multiple type of these uh, exercises. These are like more like practice is required rather than discussion because the indexing. Once we get the idea, we can go ahead. This is string type of data. There are multiple other times where we handle strings later on. there we will get into some more functions and some more advanced aspects now the next data type is known as boolean when you hear this term boolean what comes to your mind boolean when i say boolean what comes to your mind 
बोलिंग ट्रू और फॉल्स यस और नो ट्रू और फॉल्स और वन और जीरो वॉट एल्स कम्स टू आर माइंड बुलियन मीन्स ट्रू और फॉल्स वन और जीरो दैट मीन्स इन स्ट्रिंग यू कैन स्टोर एनीथिंग बट इन बुलियन वेरिएबल्स लेट एस सपोज ए इज ए बुलियन वेरिएबल ए इज इक्वल टू फाइव ग्रेटर देन सिक्स नाउ लेट मी से फाइव ग्रेटर देन सिक्स इफ आई से फाइव ग्रेटर देन सिक्स इज दैट ट्रू और फॉल्स वॉट इज द रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस फाइव ग्रेटर देन सिक्स ट्रू और फॉल्स फॉल्स है ना is there any doubt or is fine shall i explain it 5 5 is greater than 6 it is false so if i store it somewhere or let me just show you the output first false now even though it looks like f a l s e false that is not a string this is a variable system variable that means if i say a is equal to 5 greater than 6 and then if i say print the type of a or print a first print type of a A is printed as false. Class is boolean. Let me say B is equal to F A L S E, and then type of B. Can you look at type of A and type of B? Can you tell me what will be the difference? All of you understand this syntax yeah. carefully. B I have written false. A is five greater than six. So what will be the type of B? String and second yeah. one will be boolean. B will be what? String. String. A will be boolean. Boolean. Let us check. String and boolean makes sense. Yes. This is a string, which is in quotes, whereas this is a system variable. False is boolean. Makes sense. Now, if I say fifty-one is greater than six, can you tell me what is the output of this? True. 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 Any doubt? Fifty-one greater than six. General terminology. Yes or no? Outside world also accepted. So that is true. Class is boolean. Now usually you may not get to work with the boolean very frequently, but sometimes in between when there is a comparison, this boolean comes into the picture. You just need to understand when you see this variable. Like the reason why I bought this boolean. Usually boolean is not required in this discussion. You can just discuss numbers. You can just discuss strings. Go ahead. But I have seen people getting confused. People see this true immediately. What comes to your mind? Let's say type when you say print a, you are getting true. Tell me immediately what you what are you thinking about the type of variable a? Let's say if you do not understand boolean, what is the first impression that you will get when you print a? You are getting true. Usually, what do we think? A is what type of variable? Boolean. A is what type of variable? It looks like a string variable, isn't it? If yes. we do not understand what is this a, but Even though it is T R U E true, even though it is F L S F A L S E false, but still it is stored as boolean variable. Later on, when we discuss functions, there what we are going to do is let's say I'm going to just show you an example now, but later on we will go to some of the details. Let's say if I say A is five greater than six, now that is true. So if A, then print ten, else print fifteen. So if this is a condition, if the condition is true, instead of saying if the condition is true. Or if a is greater than fifteen, or something like that. In since instead of writing a condition here, you can write directly true. If true, print ten. If false, else print fifteen. Now five greater than six. Is it true or false? Output. False. False. So if a means if it is true, then print ten. Is it true? No. Else print fifteen. What will be printed in the output? In this output, 15, what will be printed? Fifteen. Fifteen will be printed because A is not true. But this looks little complicated right now because we if then else etc. We haven't discussed later on a mix of boolean and other aspects will come into the picture. Then we, I will touch upon this. As of now, you remember that there is a data type called boolean. It takes only two values. What are they? True and false. Now these are some of the primitive data types. That means these are like very very basic. There is not much of huge discussion that is needed around them because they are required in every programming language continue with the next video in the playlist we are covering everything step by step if you have any questions or the comments please post them in the comments window below